my shop, John Hall, Blues Creek Guitars, as you can see. Glenn's running the cameras today. Now this here is going to be a video on, it's actually a back replacement, but for our kit section, this is how you also apply to put in a back. Now this particular guitar, unfortunately, had the back destroyed, so I had to make a new back. So if you're looking at it from the point of the kit building, here is how you put a back on. Now, my preference is to do the back first. In this case, the top is already on as you can see. So we're going to be doing the back just as though we're building a brand new guitar. Now you can see I have some tape here. That's only because there's finish on the sides. The little tools that you're going to need are a couple of little pieces of wood that I'm going to put on the neck block and the tail block. My back has already been rigged up, okay, so you can see the bracings on it. And you can see the Martin logo, because this was a Martin D28. The braces are on, everything's secure. Now, I've got to position my back onto my neck block right here. So I'm going to slide that forward so I can catch that uh, cross grain spruce against the block. Now, because I have these little blocks on here, I'm going to fix the back part here on the tail so it doesn't move around so I can get everything lined up and centered. After all, we're dealing with a guitar and we want everything centered up so it looks good. And what I will do here, by having that block there, I can now clamp onto my tail block. I'll be able to come up and clamp onto my neck block and then I can make all of my position marks for the braces. My methodology of doing this is I'll always work from the back forward. The first lower brace, I'm not worried about it getting fit perfect. I'm just getting that to kind of get my center for the back. The next set of braces, by this time I'm going to lock things in a little bit. And the last two are just going to be, uh, everything should be done by that point. And you kind of get your fingers in tune so you can make your joint nice and tight. So with that being said, we're gonna lock this up and we're gonna start making the marks of where the bracing's gonna go. I'm sliding this off of my table. As you can see, I am in a mold. The reason why I'm in a mold is over time, guitar bodies will tend to kinda of change just through the, the stress of being a guitar. So now I can come in here, And I have the luxury of moving things yet. So I'm actually kind of happy with that center line. I'm going to move this over here. That don't look bad. Now I can take this block. And you can see there's actually a little angle on there by design because I have such an angle going on up here. And all I want to do at this point is just get things locked up so that I can make my marks. The better you can secure your stuff when you get to this point, the more accurate you can draw your lines on. So now you can see that's not going to move for me. All right? Now you can see how we are set up here. I have tape on there. I'll be able to mark my lines. I can look in there, I can see that my, my center line is happy. So now, I can mark the positions of where the braces are. Now, when I eyeball here, I can actually look at the back brace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that point of the back brace to the side and just make marks. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to mark all four. I'm going to start at the back, and as I go up, and as I go up, I do little, little hash marks so that I'll know mark number one, mark number two. So, can you see that? I'm eyeballing, I'm going to eyeball right down the side of the brace. So that if I'm looking at my brace, I want to be right at that line so I can get that mark as close to where it needs to be. I have everything kind of pre-sized.
Do, 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 do. That's one side. Oh, yeah, my back just loads that position. All right, so I have all eight positions now marked. So I can actually take the back off. After all, we can't do a heck of a lot with it on. But before I take it off, I'm going to go right here, and I'm just going to see about where I am in relationship to the side. I have to trim these so that they go inside the curfew. Okay? That looks pretty good. You can probably see a few little faint pencil lines here. So now, I know that my pencil marks are on the tape. And that will help you see what we're doing a little bit better. So you can see that? Okay? What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a ruler. I'm going to do the bottom one first. And I'm going to mark my line straight across here with my ruler. And make sure that you do this, I do this the same way I go from the neck to the tail block, neck to the tail block. You got to really be careful because it's real easy to get your, your marks crossed. I'm doing this one first. I'm not marking this one until I have this one in. So, now that I have my marks, I have to trim my brace. I also know that inside the guitar, I have curving out to about here. This is my actual outside line here, and I'm going to go in approximately the thickness of the body. All right, as thick as the body sides. Now, you might say, well, why don't you just go through the sides? You can, but I feel, number one, it's not the way that Martin did it, and since this isn't Martin, i got to do that. Number two is I fear creating a stress riser. By going through the side, you've now created a zone where a crack can form. And this wood being so well quarter sawn, there you go. And that just scares me. I have a number of saws that I use for this, and these are not very expensive. They're called a razor saw. and I use a chisel. So I'm going to take this off and all I need is a little straight edge just to get me into my my side set and I can make adjustments as I go. Now some of these little razor saws will cut in the push stroke, some will cut on the pull stroke. I like to do this on the pull stroke. And now I'm just going to take this off. I can also use my air tool to cut this, but since not everybody has one, and I'm watching, there is a little sh shade line here, so I'm trying to watch that. You'll probably get a better view when I do the other side here. And I can control a pull easier than I can a push. And I don't rush. I don't want to rush it. Now you should be able to see, I've got to get over here where Glenn can, can focus in better. Good. And now since I have that notch cut in there, I can take some of this off and I'll do a little more. There's very little set on these teeth. And now I can just, this is an old mortising chisel and I have it so I can actually put that right onto the back and I can cut straight to the 
right to the back itself. You see that? Now I'll do this side. I'll slide this up a little bit and then can probably get a better shot of me doing this. And I can't stress enough, you need sharp tools. Uh, don't rely on old stuff. You need sharp. Uh, the sharper the tool, the easier it works, the less you have to push. Because the harder you push, the quicker you're going to cut something other than what you want to work on. I often will use my fingernail, and you can see I just put it there, and that's going to work like a fence so I can get my cut started. All right. Now granted, when I do this, this isn't necessarily the way that I do it, but I just want to show you the principles of getting this done. Whenever you want to show somebody something, it's always difficult. Now, saw blade's getting tight, and if you notice, I don't put my hands and arms away when I'm pushing the chisel. But you can see how nice that comes up. So I can just take that right down. And once I get that off a little bit, now I'll go cut some more. Now when I know I'm near, I'll just work the tip, and then I can clean that off. Now I'm going to do that to all of the rest of these guys. I might need to use a push stroke here just because of the awkward position I'm in. And flip it around, I can pull it that way. But you can see how I'm bringing that down. I'm on, pop it. This one here, and you notice I just do little short. Now, I don't see other pencil marks, although I know there's going to be some here. Uh, now I'm going to start setting my braces into the curve. The first cut I'm going to do will be the low one. I have my, I use a little, my die grinder inlay tool. Uh, those of you that are a Wayne Henderson with a sharp park with pocket knife, you may go ahead and do it that way. Find what works for you. Uh, the Dremel tool will work. And you just want to be careful that whatever you use, uh, you aren't going to be in harm's way. So I'm, I'm checking the depth of my cutter, and I need to make a little adjustment. Now, here we go. I am now going to make my first cut. I have the pencil line drawn out. Now this will make a little bit of noise. Now the direction of cut is something that you want to be careful of. A route cut is where you'd be kind of like spinning backwards so that the angle of attack is coming in. Route cut would be going with the direction of spin. So basically if you're going counterclockwise with a clockwise movement, you're going to be climb cutting. So here's what I do. I'll use my two fingers here and you can see I'm using one on one side of the, on the outside, one on the inside. That gives me very finite control. That way I can just work my wrists.
now I can put this on. I can check where I'm at in relationship to my cut. And I'm looking at my center line. I'm also looking here, and I'm probably going to have to open this cut some, but not until I get my center lines right. So, do I have to move this? We'll find out in a minute, because here is where that needs to be, right there. So, I need my center line here to the net. That's critical. This has to go over a little bit. So, I'm going to have to take a little bit off right here. Now, this is probably an advanced technique. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my fingers as a guide as I bring this in. No matter where you put the hose, it's where it's going to be. So what I'll be doing is my fingers will be resting here and that's going to be letting me adjust how far in I go. This finger is going to let me know how deep I'm going. Or if you feel comfortable with a chisel, razor, whatever, go ahead and have at it. I have that off pretty well. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with my chisel. Now when I put that into this pocket, I'm looking for two things. How tight does it fit and how well on the side the side goes. Alright, I'm happy with that. I'm looking at my center line here, and I gotta, as we'd say here in Pennsylvania Dutch country, rich us around a little bit. So that's over, and I'm still gonna need to take it over a little bit. And I would much rather do three little cuts than one big all screw up cut. with where my center is. So if you think about it in simplistic terms, I took this point, that was my seesaw fulcrum, I could manipulate it this way till I got my two center points lined up. Once I have that point established to my center line, then I can come over here and help block that. So while I can always make adjustments, right now we're getting to the point where we really need to be careful and since I gotta slack this side and I do want to move my center line over here I'm going to take a little bit off more on the front of this pocket not much just a little now if this joint happens to be a little sloppy I'm, I'm not losing a lot of sleep over that but it sure doesn't take much to move it so I always do this one first because if you're gonna have a gap it's very hard to see the gap at this end of the guitar. All right, now, that's locked pretty good. You can see. I want to move it just a little more. And I want to double check something here. Do I want to roll it or do I want to slide it? And by rolling it, do I want to do this or slide it over? Do I want to do that? Right now, we have a lot more fudge room than we would in the other situation. Now right there, I'm into my mortises. And you can see, that's pretty good. So now, when I look here at my center line, I want to take this over. I'm talking a, maybe a 
itty 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 bit. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to allow that to roll. Now when that rolls, when that rolls at that point, that can take this center line towards me and that center line towards you. Just a little bit. And once I can get my, my center point, once I get my center points established, then I can do all my other trims. Now when I put that in there, now you can see I have a little, a little room. That's a, a little richy room and right there perfect. That's exactly where I want that to be. Over here, this end doesn't want to drop in. I'm a little long right here. So I'm going to trim, I'm going to just trim that off. I'm happy with this. Now I have two points that connect my back to the guitar. Granted, I have a little bit of sloppy room here, but that point going against there, this point going up against here, that's got me locked. Now, what I got to look at, and if you take notice, I have this on a pad so I can slip this around without having to touch the guitar pole. I can see that my lines are not too bad. I'm going to have to take a little bit off of here and I can just mark the, the brace and a little bit off of here. So this one has to come off a little bit more than the thickness of the side. And this one here, I just need to take a little, and I mean a little bit. So since I have a slight amount to move here, I'm going to use this. If I had a radical amount, I would use the saw and the chisel. If you aren't skilled doing it this way, I recommend the saw and the chisel. And I'm just going to... That takes care of that. And I always will put this back in the same way. One, two, three, four. One, two. That one dropped. No, it didn't. That's good, that's good. Now, I'm going to adjust my pencil line. It's close, but it has changed a hair. So what I will do, and I'll show you with a piece of paper. When I'm making a mark for my, my brace, okay, we're going to pretend that this margin line is the body rim. And this is where we're seeing our brace. So let's say we make our mark here and here. Right? So that represents the corners here. But now we've made some adjustments and now we're going to have this happen. So now this line has moved up to here, and this line has moved to here. So you know which two you want to go to, draw these down and come across like that. So now you know you're going from here to here. These two have now become nothing. That way, that's my method that I can go so if I have more than one line, I'll know which lines I'm going to hit. All right, so now at this point, I've made my marks. I've made my marks, and you can see here, the original line, here is the one that I moved. And the one over here is very similar, not quite as radical. So I'm going to bring this line to the top, that line to the top. 
Same way here, this one and here. So there's my neck block line. There's my neck block line. Come down here, tail block line, tail block line. So now you can see I'm going to be removing this area of wood. I'm going to be removing that area of wood. So you have to take that little tidbit off in there, yeah? That was easy. Remember, it is always easier when you're cutting a hole to make it bigger. Now what I'm watching is that my marks have, and they've hit. Now you can see I'm locked up good and tight. I can go here, reference my center to my neck block, and I'm pretty happy with that right now. So I have two more braces to set in. Actually, those lines don't look bad. Actually, all those lines don't look bad. Okay, I will have to move you a little bit. So I have to shorten him up a little bit. lines there 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 Now I just got to make the four notches. Now it's just a matter of boring in all the holes. Now I do kind of undercut these a little bit so that I can trim them to fit my brace. One, two, three, four. Well, look, the way it goes in, same way every time. One, two, these four are in, perfect. Oh, that one just dropped in, that's perfect. Top. 
Stop this way, say. All right. I have to trim my brace a little bit. Let me go to my power chisel. In fact, I'm gonna. Oh, perfect, perfect. That's good. All right. Now, what I'm trying for here, I'm always trying to shoot that my end, my end scallop appears between the sixteenth and an eighth, and I'll try to make them all the same because it makes cutting it a lot easier. But. That may not always be an option. So if you need to adjust the cutter to go down a little deeper, all right. Now, on my theory of why, another reason why I do not like to go through the sides of the guitar, common sense. Uh, if you aren't careful on how deep you make your, your braces, you can actually end up popping through the sides and then end up showing that the binding has to be a lot wider to hide that hole. So we don't want that to happen. All right? One, two, three. I got one more to trim in yet. It's a little long. about ready to get glued up. Alright, we now have a back. <coughs> the next thing we're going to do is glue this puppy up. There's many ways to do this and I, the more Somebody will say that my way is the only way, the more I have to be a little concerned. Find the technique that works for you. My, I'm actually been starting to use a lot more of the gold bar for this step, for this process. Now I can look inside the hole. One little thing that I do need to do here. I need to take a little, and I mean a little, that's my neck block line right there. So, I get my Chinese chisels, and I'm just going to cut this off at the line. That's it. Now while that's on here, I can also double check that we don't have anything down here holding us up. So one more time, test fit. And this is the part of building a guitar that can be a big pain in the butt. But you got to do it. Right, I'm happy with that. Maybe, maybe, yep, I'm good. All right. Now you can see that is snug, square, voila. That's how you that's how you trim a back for a guitar. And my way is the only way. Just take your time doing it. If you look at the process that I did, started here, went over here, made adjustments, take a look at your two center lines. If you're if you are off the same amount on your center line, you know you have to slide it over, which means you got to shorten this brace. If you are off center this way, over center that way, you roll. So remember that. That point there allows you to do this or this. Establish center off of the first lower brace. Once you get the center established, come over here, lock it up. Once you have three points contact, it's not going anywhere and work your lines nice and easy and try to get them as tight as you can. So the next thing we're going to do is we're now going to glue this back on. 
Alrighty, I'm going to be moving around a little bit here, so here is what the gist of what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply glue. I'm going to put my top or my back onto the body. Then I'm going to start stickering it up. Now this is with a gold bar unit. Uh, my philosophy is once you have this in a mold, you don't take it out of the mold until you have the top and the back on. There's a lot of geometry, especially for you kit builders out there. Uh, you don't want to mess up the geometry. And here is where you can actually end up racking your body. Now, my normal operating procedure for a kit would be to have a luthier disc to match the back. Now, maybe all of you, all of you do not have that. So in that case, I'm going to tell you to do the top because the top is the flattest that you have. This is a crushable foam so that as my go bar rods continue to apply force, it's not going to, it's going to let the body to sink in uniformly. So we aren't going to have this happening to the body. Because if anything can screw up a new guitar, that is it. So right here's my rim. I am going to take this and I'm going to trim this down a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to apply my glue. Now, when I put my glue on, there is a map for just how much do you want to put on here. Now, you, you want to have enough glue that you can make this a solid joint. You don't want so much glue that you have it running down the sides and making a big globby mess. So you can see I'm pretty much dropping out a pencil line of glue. Now there are a number of kind a number of glues that will work for this and I will tell you that the back while well, I'm a hot high glue and a fish glue guy uh, a wood any of the common wood glues is going to do the job. So as long as you have a quality glue fresh that's all that's going to matter. Now you can see all of that glue I put on there. I have nice little beads, approximately the thickness of a, a pencil lead when I put it out there. That's about the proper amount of glue. So, first thing I'm going to do, take this point right over to there, stick it in, snap it. Put this one in, snap it. Slide that one up, boom, boom, boom. They're all in. I want to do my blocks as quick as I can. And go bars are really neat, they, they're handy, they, they can do a lot for you, but at the same token, when they come out of here, they aren't happy campers, so you want to be careful. Make sure that you have them secure, and I'm also working that I'm keeping my go bar as vertical as possible, and I don't know if you've noticed or noticing, I'm working right on the rim of the guitar, I'm not putting these that far, you know, very far in. I'm putting the go bar on the rim of the guitar. Sometimes you got to nurse them a little bit. Sometimes you got to cuss a little bit. And sometimes they just work easy. That's good. That's good. This side here doesn't want to go in. I've got to take this off. And you don't want to force it. When you know they fit, there. I think that just fits. Yep. There it goes. Once you get them in, then go. The tail block, neck block are very critical. And if you kind of notice, I'm working at the bracing points. And it's good to have a little a box full of little blocks like this because you can use them for little calls just as I'm doing.
All right, now, since I have a number of points down, I'm looking at stuff, I'm making sure that everything, just by pushing down, that I'm getting my joints to close, which in fact I am. So now, now I just sticker the heck out of it, allow the clamping time for the glue, Now this is going to require an 8 to 12 hour clamp time. So while you won't see me taking it out of the gold bar deck, now the critical point is that I am keeping this point in line with the rim of my guitar. Now what I'm doing is this point is staying right in line with the rim. I don't want to be in the back, I don't want to be inside the top. I want to be on the rim and on the kerfing. After all, that is the joint that I am gluing. Now, talking about the different glues, we have uh, alphaic resin, we have polyvinyl, we have fish glue, we have high glue. And when we're talking high glue, we aren't talking about the cold glue, we're talking about the hot high glue. All of them are great for this. The techniques of clamping, look at the bottle. What does the bottle tell you the clamp time is? All right. Uh, I know that tight bond can be pulled in like 45 minutes, but fish glue, hot high glue, they are protein collagen glues. They need a good six to eight hour clamp time. And that's what we're going to get. And I can look over the whole rim and I can see that my joint is closed and tight. And that is how you glue a back on to the body. It's not hard, it's just the process. You can see how I did it. And I try to be the same way every time. Now, while I'm talking about glues, advantages, disadvantages. One big advantage to fish glue and hot hide glue is that, let's say tomorrow morning I come in and I take my clamps off and I find a little gap. I can just shoot a little bit of hot water in there, reclamp it, and I'll be good to go. The, the technical term is that it is re-amalgamable. Re-amalgamable, something like that. Look it up. Anyhow, it means that the, the glue will actually re-dissolve, reactivate, and become glue again. Alphaic resin, polyvinyl glues usually don't give you that, uh, that luxury. I have found though with uh, tight bond, inside of 12 hours you can shoot that with some steam and it will re-clamp. So, that'll, if, if it happens to you, it's not the end of the world. So, you do know that you can shoot it with a little bit of steam and you should be fine. And you can see all of these sticks that I have on here, each one exerts about 8 to 10 pounds. Uh, tells you that what little body is quite a strong little contraption. So, that's it. I thank you for coming to my shop. I hope that you learned something. And if there's one thing, don't be afraid to contact me. We're happy to give any answer we can for any question. We are here to help. So from my shop to yours, thanks, Glenn, for coming in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.